Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. We're here for another episode of Go With The Flow, the series where I try and teach you something useful about Flow Designer with as few video edits as possible. Today we're gonna use Flow Designer for situations where you disagree with what is out of box. So the one thing I wanna make sure of is that when I disagree with the out of the box, I can get things my way without opening the out of box components. If a business rule is doing something, I don't wanna to have to edit that business rule to get what I want. And so I'm going to use something that ServiceNow does in ITBM, or I think they call it SPM now, that I have disagreed with for years and use Flow Designer to solve that problem. This is a resource plan. And on a demand or a project, what a resource plan allows you to do is ask for a certain time commitment from another team. So this one is asking for the commitment between month six and month 10, and it's asking for 40 hours, and it's asking it from the ServiceNow team. Now, the ServiceNow team has a bill rate in ServiceNow. So just asking for those resource implies a cost. So if you look down here, we see that the requested allocations, there's five of them because it spans five months and it's come up with a price so that the total estimated cost of this resource plan is $4,800, super handy. Now that the resource plan has been created, ServiceNow is going to create a cost plan on the same project. So here I am on a project, I scroll down, I see a cost plan, and to the naked eye, this might look just fine. We see that it's the right amount, but <gasps> its cost type is labor capex. And when you're looking at things from a financial perspective, you always have to prove capex. There's differences in the way finance handles opex versus capex. Capex incurs certain privileges. So for companies that do a lot of auditing on their financials, for example, you want to be very careful what you put into capex especially if it's labor so a lot of people for a very long time have wished that resource plans didn't default to a cost plan of labor capex and that's what we use flow designer to help us with today so here i am on flow designer i'm going to click a new flow and we're going to call this resource cost plan corrector so the first thing i want to do is define a trigger and the trigger is going to be whenever a cost plan is created so let's add a trigger and let's say a record is created and we want this to be on cost plan. We don't care about trigger of the record being updated because we're really going to define that cost type once. Now we do want some conditions on this. The first condition is we wanna make sure that this cost plan has actually been created by a resource plan. We don't wanna be fooling around with any cost plans that we're legitimately putting in as labor capex manually or via some other mechanism. So. Let's make sure that the resource plan of the cost plan is not empty. Okay, I'm gonna add a second condition here and this is a good habit to get into. I'm using the flow designer to basically fix something that I don't agree with out of box, but I have to leave open for the fact that ServiceNow could <coughs> fix this so that it defaults to labor OPEX. So what I'm also gonna do is condition out cost plans that are created as labor OPEX because I won't want the flow to actually trigger in those cases. So let's go cost type is not labor OPEX. All right, so what do we wanna do when a cost plan is created as labor CapEx from a resource plan? Well, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is change that cost plan's cost type to labor OPEX. So let's go action, update record. And what record are we gonna update? We are going to update the cost plan that triggered the flow. So drag that record onto the record and it automatically knows the table. Now we gotta fill in some fields. So let's grab the cost type field. And what are we gonna set it to? We are going to set it to labor OPEX. So we got that action done. Now, another thing to consider is I wanna make sure that this update is as visible as possible. I don't want it to be a secret that this workflow has gone to the background and changed something that is usually an out of the box behavior. So let's also update the work notes of the project that this cost plan is associated with. So let's add another update record but it's not updating the same record, it's updating a different record. So let's update record. What record are we gonna update? We're gonna update the top task of the cost plan record. That's the task that this cost plan is associated with. And since top task is in the table task, let's capitalize on that and grab the work notes field. And we'll explain what we've done here in the background for anybody who's curious uh, about the project. Cost plan, and let's put in quotes, the cost plan record's name. 
has had its cost type changed to labor opex by flow and let's grab the flow's name and drop it down there and that way if in fact this was a mistake we at least have a log of it happening so let's click done and maybe i'm also going to want to annotate the resource plan to make sure that there's notes there too so let's update that record so we're going to go update record and what record are we going to update? We are going to update the resource plan of the cost plan. So we go to cost plan, pull that resource plan pill, and we'll go to add value, grab the notes field, and we'll say cost plan. And let's grab the cost plan's name again. Cost type has changed to labor opex, triggered by flow resource plan corrector. Okay, it's a simple flow, but it allows us to get the results that we want when we don't agree with something that the out of box does. So let me save this and I'm actually gonna activate it and we're gonna test it live. Activate, here I am on a project. I'm gonna create new for a resource plan. We're gonna request resources from the ServiceNow team and we're gonna pick 40 hours and we're gonna submit that request. Okay, it's the same price. Let's go back to the project. Here we are on the project. Let's take a look at that cost plan. Labor OpEx, mission accomplished. Okay, so now what we wanna do is make sure we go to our instance documentation to write down what we just did. You are doing documentation, right? Right? All right, so here we are on the documentation. I've gone to the cost planning section of whatever document is forming my memorialized stuff for my instance. I've made a new subsection here called cost plans generated from resource plans. We have an explanation of why we needed to build this. We state out-of-box resource plans generate labor capex uh, cost plans. This is in violation of our finance principles and makes it harder to budget our labor appropriately. The cost plans have accurate numbers, but an unwanted cost type. No out-of-box objects were modified in this feature. I've then gone ahead and referenced the story that authorized us to do this, put a little message about why you could copy that right from the story if you need to, and now I'm just gonna uh, make sure that the object is linkable. So I'm going back to my flow, resource cost plan corrector, just gonna dump that into my document there. Then I'm gonna go back to my flow designer, I'm gonna grab the URL, and I'm gonna come back into my doc, right click, hit the link, embed the hyperlink. So I've just described an abstract why we need this so that a product owner who's not a developer can figure out why this was made. I've linked to the story that justifies why it was made and I've linked to the objects that I've made. And I did that in seconds. There are people out there that are going to tell you that this is hard. Anyway, there you go folks. Another go with the flow where we use flow designer in a very, very simple flow in order to do something to fix an out-of-box functionality that we disagreed with. Hope this provides some value to you, and I will see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here, as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1,500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list, and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the emailed picture here.